any new impressions from those two games? Well, playing two teams like that, who I, I think both those teams are top ten teams with age and experience, and you know, it would, it would have been better if it was like a month from now, maybe. But it, regardless of when it happens, I think it's good for our team to see it. Um, if it would happen a month ago, we might have gotten into worse habits, and so happening when it did happen allowed our guys to see things. And that's why I liked how they responded against Carolina because I think they saw things then that night after Michigan State when we showed them some stuff that, you know, this makes sense. And then we just didn't put it 40 minutes together against Carolina, but we saw some things that were good in that game. But the glaring things that are coming out it, it, from a defensive standpoint is transition. Um, and we've spent a lot of time on that here in the last 48 hours leading into the, these week of games. Uh, our transition defense has got to improve. The urgency to it has got to improve. Uh, and then offensively, uh, just keeping the ball moving. Um, we have periods of that, uh, but we are not putting together 40 minutes of the ball moving like we like to see it move. It needs to touch hands. It needs to touch different sides of the court. It needs to go inside out. Uh, and we're all learning. You know, it's a, it's a learning curve. You know, now with Cody and and obviously Moses, Jay Hill, we got some size inside, uh, but that we've got to get that offense going, not just side to side with ball handling. It's got to go in and out, and that'll open up some more threes for us. Defensive transition is it mostly just guys losing guys on the way back? Yeah, I, I think it's positioning. A lot of guys don't. I think a lot of young guys think I'm guarding number two, uh, you're guarding number four, and now in transition, that's where we run to two and four. And transition is a scramble drill. Um, so. I may have to guard four and you have to guard two. So it's figuring out, kind of getting back, getting the basket covered, getting uh, the ball stopped, and then we work out from there. Uh, and then it's some guys understanding that, you know, how you run this way, it's not downhill and uphill that way. Uh, the floor's level. So it's the effort that you give coming to this end has to be the same going to the other end. So I think it's a combination of those three things because we're seeing in film, we're seeing some, some really good growth in half-court defense, and we've got to get it to that. And so our focal point's been on what we've been doing in transition. You mentioned all 40 minutes. That was something that Chris mentioned after the game. How do you go about doing that uh, with guys? Well, it's a trust. I think one of it's trust, especially offensively. When we're looking at it on uh, from an offensive standpoint, it's building that trust that uh, across the board of the nine, ten guys, nine to ten guys that we're playing, they trust one another regardless of the time, regardless of the score, regardless of first half, second half. Uh, and I think that's just experience of playing with each other. And we did go through about two and a half weeks, uh, almost three weeks of very little contact uh, because of our injuries. Um, and so I think that slowed a little bit of building that trust. Now we're crank, we've cranked that back up in the last week to 10 days, plus a lot of games. So we're hoping that you know we've got basically two and a half weeks here at home with four really good opponents uh, that are going to give us really good tests. It's going to be 160 minutes of a great tests for us uh, before we hit the road again. So the next two and a half weeks are crucial academically, obviously, as we end the quarter, uh, and it's crucial for our growth as a basketball team. What, what are your first thoughts on the new uh, NET uh, rankings that replace the RPI? The new what? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what the exact They're acronym for Basically, power rankings. Yeah. Oh, I haven't even. I guess I don't have a comment because <laughs> I haven't even seen them or know what that is. Yeah, well, they, so, they have your upcoming guys ranked really high, like uh, Belmont's number 11, LMU's number 13, Notre Dame's 18. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, our, our target right now, we what have we played? Six games. So, to me, that's a really hard hard figure. But, no, those teams are really, really good. Um, I don't know what they've got Michigan State and North Carolina, but they, they definitely should be in the top 10 of all the games I've been watching. So you know, I think there's got to be a, a bigger pool of games to figure out any of those formulas. You mentioned ball movement earlier, and a lot of the times you know, when people think of ball movement, they, they think about the guards. But what have you seen from the big men in terms of their passing ability? Well, and it starts with the guards. It definitely starts with the guards because they're usually the guys bringing the ball to the court. So, uh, that thing's got to, that's got to stay moving consistently. And like, for instance, bigs, if bigs are going to run the court and they don't get the ball, then they stop running the court. And now you got problems. Uh, you want the defense to get as far down the court to this baseline as you can. So now they have to come up. Um, and when that happens, you get a lot of good offensive play. And you do that by running the floor and getting the ball to this area. And 
so many times we got inconsistency of the ball stopping way too high on the court. And we've got to get that thing um, moving and touching bigs. We always talk about playing inside out. You know, it's uh, and that's so true. Even if our post guys touch it and it's not a post move, the ball has gotten low on the court and now we can feed back out for spot threes. I think we've taken some more difficult threes this year, yet I want my threes to go up because uh, we like shooting the three ball. Uh, but it's, it's going to go up because of what we do in the paint. And so we've got to continue to focus on getting the ball inside and getting the ball to the rim. I know we're still super early in the season, but do you feel uh, with a four-game homestand coming up, a sense of urgency to, to protect this home and then win all those games? Well, the, the urgency that I hope our team feels is that coming off of the Las Vegas uh, Invitational uh, of seeing two teams that I think are high-level teams, of okay, that's what we're trying to get to. Uh, we're not there yet, and now we've got two opportunities this week. Uh, we've got 80 minutes of play with Hawaii and, and LMU, two really good basketball teams that uh, we get a chance to compete against and show growth. Uh, obviously, winning is the, the ultimate goal, and that's what we want. Uh, it's not – we haven't talked – in regard to Crystal, we haven't talked to our team about, you know, it's, it's win four games or the season's over. You know, that's not what we talk about. We talk about, hey, we got smacked in the face. Uh, we learned a lot of lessons in Vegas. Um, now can we come back home? And in our next opponent, can I come out and see a, a, a different team? You know, just of not so much of our energy or effort. I think that's been very good. It's just been more of our concentrated mindset. Uh, and that's what is hard for young players. Young players probably struggle the most of understanding going from high school and AAU to this level of how hard you have to play consistently. Um, and that's the hardest lesson, I think, to learn. And hopefully we learned those lessons against Carolina and Michigan State because we had periods, second half of Michigan State, first half of Carolina, that were pretty good. But we couldn't sustain that kind of effort and that's that level of concentration over 40 minutes. And a lot of young players struggle learning that, and that's what we got to grow to. You mentioned uh, Cody Riley playing, working his way back into playing shape. Is, is he made a, as he does that, is he making a case for more playing time? Oh, absolutely. Uh, he's starting to get into better shape. And so that's the, we've kind of, you know, our, uh, when we went to Vegas, we didn't have a limit on his minutes. His limit on the minutes was just conditioning and not wanting to throw too much at him too quickly. Because uh, I did think he tired quickly, and that's nothing against him. He hasn't been able to do much for three weeks. So um, I think now getting back home, and again, that's, Part of how crucial this two and a half week homestand is. We're at home, they can crank out the academics and do what they're supposed to do right here, getting a good, um, comfortable schedule, uh, and then be able to have our facilities to them to where there's no travel that they can, for a guy like Cody, he can really, he can watch a lot of film, uh, get caught up where he's behind there, and then work on his conditioning. He's been, he's been doing that, and he's had two really good practices here going into today. How do you go about helping Jalen balance his scoring and also his passing? Yeah, and it, he's a young guard, uh, and I told him afterwards that his first half against Carolina was, as, in my opinion, as good as I've seen him. Uh, I thought he worked defensively. I thought he, he had eight assists at halftime with, like, one or two turnovers. So he was on pace for a 16-4 game, uh, which is incredible. And so I think it's learning. He, he's no different than the other guys. It's a trust factor. And I thought in the second half he got hurried up a little bit, uh, and we had too many dribbles going nowhere. Instead of what he did in the first half, he was a downhill guy. And when he goes downhill, he's as fast and as good as anybody. Uh, so we're trying to get him going more north-south than we do east-west. And then when he gives the ball up, move, cut. Uh, he's got a habit of standing 35 feet from the basket. And I don't want that because he can really shoot the ball. And I think that's where if he'll learn once he gives it up, cut into areas where your man's not and in a area where you can catch, shoot it, pass it, dribble it. Uh, and when he does that, I think his his shots are going to go up, his shot percentage is going to go up, and he's going to get scoring there. But he could score in transition. There's all kinds of ways that we want him scoring the basketball. But when you're running a team, it's making sure that Wilkes is getting what he needs and Cody and Moses and uh, Prince and on down the line, you've got a huge responsibility when you're a point guard. That's why it's not an easy position to play. And I thought the first half against Carolina, he was tremendous. And so he's watching a lot of tape. Jay's doing a tremendous job this year of just studying it, learning it, diving into it, taking ownership of it. And I think each game he's going to continue to evolve into uh, I know the player that we think he can become. How did he get the team to play like they did against Carolina that first half of the two and a half? 
get it. Get well, we've had we've had two halves. We we we've, we've played two halves uh, very well this year, but we haven't played opponents like that. Um, you know, obviously we we think we've played good opponents, but not to the level Car Carolina and Michigan State. I think uh, the reason why I say they're top ten, they have seniors in their starting lineups. They got juniors in their starting lineups. You got a Carolina team who's got. What a couple guys on our team that won national championship. I mean, just a ton of experience. Like May hurt us in the second half. You know, a Johnson. Johnson goes 1958 without scoring, and yet he scores 10 in the next two minutes. He's a fifth-year kid, <laughs> so fifth year in his in the ACC. So that experience, they understand it, they get it. Sometimes our guys, they just haven't had the experience to know. Hey, we just played really good 20 minutes. You know, this is this is good. And then there's this, they kind of exhale. And you can't exhale uh, playing teams like that. You've got to be on point. And I, I think our guys learned that. And then it's building the trust factor to where, like, uh, Carolina can go nearly 20 minutes and their leading score, not score. And yet the guys know, hey, we got to get him open. We got to, he's important to what we're doing. And now he gets 10 points in two minutes. And so it's stuff like that that if all of a sudden we got a guy that's important to our game that's not scoring. How do we get him the ball? How do we get him a better shot? And that's just experience and being on the court at the same time. And um, and, and they're learning. They're getting better. You know, and I think this four, these four games are going to be crucial before we hit the road again of just kind of seeing. That's what I want to see, where our trust factor goes in the next two weeks, both offensively and defensively.